I want you to think about your business as a little machine. We're going to be looking at that machine today. I'm going to be asking you some questions from a retention standpoint to make sure you're retaining the information that we're covering, okay? Like, like explanation of service, right? Like what does a hit list mean? What does a farm club mean? What is a top 25? And so, because we need to make sure you're not only retaining the information, but you're actually executing the information. So look at the person and say, if there's one area in my business that's not working the way I would like to, because today we're gonna to get into the seven touches prior to you having a contract, the referral zone, which I think is the highest point of energy, point of contract to the closing, and then post-closing. You know, what, do you, what is your touch system if I closed a house with you, like how would you come back after me to get that referral after the closing, okay? That's what we're gonna be covering today. So start off by saying this is one little area of my machine, it's not working like I want it to. Okay, take off. Because I'm listening to some of the conversations and uh, my, my suspicion is a lot of people in the room are having the same battles. Okay, a lot of people in the room are fighting the same things or struggling at the same area. So you guys start us off over here and what's a, what's a, a point of, of frustration in your business? Yeah, I was telling Christy, I said probably my point of frustration, I solved a, a little bit of it last year with some on with some marketing pieces that I mm -hmm. did. And, but I still am working on some of my online stuff that I don't really quite have the look I want yet. So that's what I want to work on. Okay, all right, okay. Mine is after closing. Good. We're going to talk about that today, so that'll be great. You're just talking about the, the brand and the look yeah, of something? Just, just having like a, like I want to have something to where it's almost, um, and I use Sarah Milligan, who's not here today, but she's got like a, a set look when she sends out an, yeah. an email on a listing or a newsletter or whatever. She has kind of a look. Yeah. And I haven't quite mastered that online for myself right. yet, even though I do different things online marketing-wise. Yeah. I want to have a look, and I don't want to have to think too much about it every time I do it. Like okay. I want to have a look and I just input the information. Right. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people use certain fonts that are, you know, right. that are that are that's their brand, their logo, their look. Okay. So you're constantly imprinting that in people's people's minds. Okay. All right, Chris. What about you? I think three of us were talking about just having enough people in our database okay. to constantly have you know, genuine, real conversations with. It. Okay, so I sent out an article about a week and a half ago on this called The Law of Diffusion. And the reason that's critical is because out of every, what it shows you is the number of people that actually buy into something. And that is true of both teams, but it's also true in selling. Okay, and what that article showed was a, was a bell curve. So if you want to draw a little bell curve on your form, this, is, this, is, this will show you why you need volume. Okay? <coughs> At the very first end, at the very first part of the bell curve is about two percent, which are called which are called innovators. Okay, now an innovator is a person that jumps on board. They kind of come with batteries included. They don't need a lot, of, right? Like think of an innovator in real estate as a person that when they see something they like, they buy it. They don't need to be convinced. They probably already have their capital lined up. How many of y'all have got a person you work with like that? As soon as they see it, they like it. That's it. I'm in. Right. This, these are great people to have too because there's not this long sales cycle. That, that's the part of their personality is, man, they, they're ready to go. But, but it's only a very small percentage of people like that. 2% of people like that. Typically in the business world, these are also the movers and shakers, the risk takers, the, you understand what I'm saying? They're the people out front. They don't have to be convinced. When they see something, they go, okay? What, right, wrong, or indifferent. They, are, they have a high propensity to take risk. They, they got a lot of confidence. They're, they're, they're innovators, okay? Then there's a percentage of people, so write this percentage down, 13.4% of people are, are early adopters. These are people who, who move quickly as well. Maybe you gotta have a conversation with them, maybe you gotta talk to them a little bit, but for the most part, they're ready, they're ready to rock and roll. They're early adopters, they jump on board. Once they understand what's going on, they're in. This is very critical because this represents about 15 to 16% of people, okay? So, so if, if you're looking for, when you're going out to sale, just remember these two numbers because when, no matter how many people you're bringing into your funnel, it's only about this percentage of people that's actually gonna be interested to move forward, okay? 
Now, then there's something called late adopters, which is 34%. And a late adopter is a person that's going to be a long sales cycle. You really got work. You're going to earn your money on these, okay? And you're going to go back and forth and back and forth, and they need more information. And sometimes, some depends on what day it is on if they're on board or not. Okay? You called me this morning. I'm not on board. You catch me tonight. I am on board. But I'm really wishy-washy. Okay? It doesn't mean I won't adopt and move forward, but it just means, man, it's a lot harder. Then, the last 34% are what's called laggards. 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 L-A-G-G-A-R-D-S. <laughs> And let me just let you in. These people ain't never going to be on board. It don't matter if you move in with them. It don't matter what you tell them. They do not have a propensity to take risk. They do not, right? And these people will absolutely drive you crazy. So this will be a person you show X number of houses and nothing's ever going to fit. They're never going to be happy. They're never, you think they're going to move forward, but, but, but here's the deal. They're not. Now, when you understand this, and I want, I want to go back to when I was a high school uh, basketball coach. We actually won a championship with six players. I had 15 to 18 on the team, but this law of diffusion actually was in play. Six of those players were movers and shakers. But really out of the six, there was one or two real movers and shakers, which were the innovators. Then I had some early adopters. Then I had late adopters, and then I had laggards, right? So we actually won with just six players. Whole team had this many. Now, why is that important when you sell? This comes up to for every 30 people that you're trying to work with, only 4.8 of those people will buy. Everybody with me? So, so I look at it like this. When I learned this, it really, it really changed a lot of things because it told me how many people we really have to go through to get down to the nitty-gritty of the people that will buy. Okay, and so just so so just think about this. For every thirty, there's four point eight. So you and I were talking about you know, my pipeline's not full enough, my database is not big enough. Okay, and if you study databases, guys, most of the databases, the, the stats tell us one percent, one to three percent of a total database is interested and will buy something. Well, same thing, same what the same thing I'm telling you here. So if you got a database of you know fifty people, right? So that's what you're saying. You're not going through enough people to get enough volume for every 30, you're only going to get probably three or four of those people. But what if you're only going through 10? What if you only got a database of 50 versus, right? I was with a mortgage person last night and he said they had a mortgage database. They had a database of a million people. So when you're selling to a million people, look at the numbers here. If 1% of those people are interested or 3% of those people. But imagine if that database was only 50. So I tell you that because you need to know when you go out Okay, and you're trying to pitch your product, your services, your everything, there's an there's a, there's a expectation you have to have of understanding no matter what room you go into. I could put you in a room of 100 people and you could be up in front of those 100 people and it would be a myth for you to believe that all 100 of those people are going to, buy, are going to be interested in what you're selling. There's going to be, out of every 100, you see what I'm saying? There's going to be, four, there's going to be a 13% of those people that go, I like her, I'm interested. I'd like to move forward. I'd like to talk to more. You're sitting there thinking, all these people are going to get on board, but they're not. This is just the way people are. You follow me here? So, so the big lesson is what? What's the big lesson for a real estate uh, professional? We got to go through a lot of people. We got to go through a lot of people, which is why you really, that's why a lot of people coach you to have 10 critical conversations every day, talk to X number of people, collect as many business cards you can in your database. You see what I'm saying? Because you got to build a big platform to really get down to the core. And here's a good example. If we're coaching, let's say, 350 people in Monster Producer, there is really only about 30 to 35 of those people who operate at a very high level. Look at how many numbers we have to go through to get to. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and this stat uh, helps you to understand that. So it would be crazy if you think all 350 of those people are going to do everything you say. They're going to buy in. They're going to be early adopters. They're going to be innovators. You're really going into it with a, and that'll set you up to be very frustrated. Lots of numbers, okay? So that's, that's part of your thing. Now, so how can we solve that problem? If I came to you and said, I figured out really my problem is I just don't, knowing what I know now, I don't have a big enough deal here. What would you tell me to do? Get involved with different activities. I mean, just like 
volunteer, just put yourself in places where you can give something and also mm -hmm. somebody may want to give you something back. And, and listen, meeting 30 people at a bar and talking to 30 people, you can't count those 30 people because you're not talking about real estate. You could, you could come back and say, I talked to 30 people last night, but we're not having a meaningful conversation. You're not uncovering what they need. They may or may not be a real prospect, may or may not even be sober. You understand what I'm saying? So, so my point is, is you got to go through a lot of people to get this. But, but I do suggest if you're having 10 critical conversations a day or five critical conversations a day, you're doing discovery. You're asking questions. They're, that's leading you to new doors that you're going down, okay? All right, what about you guys? Well, mine was what we were talking about. Well, actually, it's two things that frustrate me about myself. Uh, first of all, I don't get out and network nearly as much. And, and I've improved greatly this year. Good. Don't get me wrong. But I don't do it enough. But secondly, I don't follow up. I do have a system for following up. I don't get up every day with that attack plan and go, yep. okay, this is what I need to do to get to here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, good. It's good. So on the days that you don't get up and do that, what what is, what is what prohibits you from doing it? it not being focused in, even in the mornings or even during the day. Because like one call will say, hey, I got to have this. And then you're like, you get pulled off. And I let myself get pulled off in that direction yeah. too many times. Are you mapping out your days the night before? It, yeah, well... When I do map them out the day All before, right. yeah, that's the <laughs> Good. key. Good. Yeah, and I do that, you know, but it's like you have to do it every night. How many agents are mapping out their days the night before now? Okay, so is that helping you? <laughs> Seven to 15 minutes a night, right? We had an agent this morning said on a good day she makes 30 phone calls, on a bad day she makes none, right? So, so the question is what, put, what, what makes it a bad day? Is it because you, because you, yeah, is it the night before? Is it because you stayed up too late? Because you woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Is it because you just don't feel like it today? Like, like there's a pretty big difference in it. On a good day, I make 30 calls. On a bad day, I don't make any. See the, see the inconsistency there? I'd rather you make 10 great calls every day than make 30 one day and take a day off and make the, you see what I'm saying? I mean, I think the power of consistency is really where you start to build momentum. Okay, what about you? Okay, when you say systems, what, what specifically are you saying? Um, probably like my hit list, like making okay. the correct amount of calls each yeah. day and some marketing and okay. getting people's attention. Yeah, okay. So think of a system as a framework that I'm using. The power is really in the process. Do you believe that? See, what you need to trust in is the process. And the process is the system. Hit list, farm club top 25, new customers. If I will work that system every day, it will lead to more leads. It will lead to more business. But if I work it some days and don't work it other days, and, right, and I don't stay in a, a framework and a system, then what happens is it's very random and sporadic. That's not gonna show up. That's gonna show up 30, 60, or 90 days, 90 days in the future. When you have a down month, and you start going, why did I have a down month? Well, I was very inconsistent 90 days ago. Okay, so just remember there comes a time when winter asks what you did all spring and summer. And it's coming whether you're ready or not, right? So let's prepare for it, okay? Let's prepare for it, all right, Karen? Mine is the consistency in um, the area that I chose to focus on in the sense of what we call farming. Mm -hmm. And it's the consistency in, can, I've done better, mm -hmm. but I did, I did not do everything that I planned. And then the other one is my social media platform which I know you have to have, you know, different, different things um, in the, and, and I've just dropped the ball on it totally. Okay. So I, I had one and it's just having to do another, get another one. Okay. And when you say like, what kind of platform? Um, in the sense of like, you know, having different things in this, um, you know, I do the client appreciation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a buyer's workshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, so different platforms of business. I got gotcha. you. Now I need a social media one. I, I had one. Got gotcha. Let it go about a year ago, and I've done nothing with it. Okay. Okay. So. Good. So if you were trying to become a person of interest on social media, let's just say, a lot of agents are going down this path, right? To become people of interest. The power of social media is you can't take a thousand meetings today, but you could, you could, you could touch a thousand people through social media. You could touch ten thousand people, right? How does the EOS play into building a, a, building a platform on social? How does the EOS directly tie to you being a person of interest on social media? Like you're talking about what differentiates yourself and what you're yeah. doing. That other 
agents probably aren't out there. That's right. So the, the EOS is basically a set of beliefs that is like your home base. So let's pretend that you believe every person deserves the right to have a professional represent them when they buy, sell, build, finance, real estate. Are we all in agreement with that? And that's your core belief, okay? When you're doing marketing and promotion and social media, no matter, no matter what you do, everything should come home to your home base. So you would never see me do a video without ending that video by saying what? You know I believe everybody. That's right. Everybody needs a coach in life because you can't see the picture when you're inside the front, right? That's my home base. Everything else just supports that thought. Now, when you go out and share that thought with the world, there will be people who line up and believe the same things you do. That's called affinity. And they're like, man, I like this person. I believe the same things they do, right? And it's not the social media. It's like Karen saying, this one me mechanism is not going to drive you a bunch of business. It is this, I want you to think of this as one strategy comboed with multiple strategies. So social media, database, hit list, farm club, events, customer appreciate. You see what I'm saying? I'm, what I'm trying to get you to think of is layering all of these strategies on top of each other. Because we don't know which one's going to work. Now, over time, when you're doing these strategies, you'll start to see, hey, these events that I'm doing are feeding me a lot of referrals. Or these events I'm doing are, are, are generating leads. Or me working my hit list and this one demographic is generating a lot of leads. Then you'll start to, to identify what your top four strategies are and then your secondary strategies. And I really, I really recommend you doing four primary and two secondary. So, uh, so if you tell me you're great face to face, that's one of your primary strategies. Okay, you should have a lot of face to face this week. If you tell me I'm great on social media, that's one of your primary strategies. If you tell me I'm great working my database, now I, I'm, when I'm saying database, what I'm saying is you have a tri little tribe of people that you are connecting with. Okay, some people think their database is I'm calling on people. My definition of that is I've got a storehouse of information, you're in it, and I'm communicating with you with value. That's my database. Now I can still call you too. Call you, email you, take you, know, all those things, okay? Everybody with me? So part of the lead problem we have is we don't have enough leads is because we don't have enough strategies, okay? And we're looking at we're going, look, I'm only doing two or three things, and I'm not getting enough leads. Well, it's because we're not layering these strategies on top of each other, okay? Questions on any of that? But the EOS, guys, until you know what you believe and what it is you really do and how you do it different than other people, it's very hard to go out into the marketplace and separate yourself from other people because you are not clear on, on what makes you different than everybody else. So what you're really selling is the same thing they're selling, which is the definition of commodity. Okay? It's the definition of commodity, okay? Keep going. That's a good one. I feel like mine's mostly uh, the crux of the problem is time management because I, I kind of view my business as a four-legged animal, uh -huh. you know, and I've got four legs and... I try to hit all of them every day and trying to grow this thing, mm -hmm. and it just gets all catty yeah. because I'll hit something and then I'll, you know, I, but once I start focusing, mm -hmm. if I'll give it 40 hours a week, I'll see a huge difference, okay. and that's my main problem. What can we do to help you focus? Focus that. Um, well, y'all are helping, mm -hmm. just getting a lot of input. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I've got a, a, enough training that mm -hmm. I just need to get busy and okay. do it. Um, this week has been good because uh, several things kind of kicked in. I had to reroute my brain that I am not annoying when I pick up the phone. Mm, that's that good. I like to do phones. Yeah. And so I've been really bugging yeah. people in my brain. I've had to say, no, you're not bugging, Susan. You're gonna, right. you know, so I'm just overcoming that by just making myself do it. Yeah. And also, I can't spend any money until I earn some. Mm. And I don't like that at all. Okay. That's a good philosophy, though. So I have me a whole list of things I want to buy, and I just said I'm not buying it. So if you have a paradigm in your brain, which is a, like an individual lens in which you see the world, that, you, that calling people back is bugging them, that's a mental roadblock. Right. It, it's only bugging them if you don't have anything valuable to say. Mm -hmm. If you have something valuable to say and you can play pitch and catch with the person mm -hmm. and, and you're creating value for them, it's not bugging them. And, and I'm getting that 
that feedback that, oh, that's that's great, you know. Yeah. And so, and I've, I've had good response from about three different people that I just... Okay. Do you have clarity about your dominant focus, about what, what your tangible outcome you're trying to drive is? I do. Okay, so if you have clarity about your dominant focus, which is typically a number of transactions you would like to do, mm -hmm. or a number, then that tells you what the high value of your time is versus the low value. Mm -hmm. So when you say time management, I would say, are, do you have clarity about the highest value of your time mm -hmm. moving you toward your dominant focus? And, and when I go down a wormhole, yeah. I, I just stop it. Good. It's a low value. Are you time blocking? No. Karen's going to help me with that. Good. She mentioned that today, that she's going to Good. get me building. The, the, reason, the reason you're time blocking is because you, you can tell me that I, I'm gonna, I prospect all day. But, but the challenge is we know that that's probably not true. When you set aside a time to do it and you stick to that time and you have the discipline, then I, if it were up to me, I'd just get it out of the way. So I like to do things in the morning and I want to get out of the way. That's why I work out in the morning because I, if I wait till 7 o'clock at night, it ain't happening. Okay? Because I, so I'll just like tackle things I don't want to do. I do them first thing. So prospecting, I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to make it happen, right? But, but if you don't set aside time, you'll get to the end of the day, and you won't have done anything to generate a new customer. And then another thing that I had to overcome, I'll send something out, some more information. You know how we've been learning more information, more information, more uh -huh. information. The next day, if they haven't responded, hey, I got it, I got it, thank you, whatever, then I make myself reach back out to them via text. Did you receive it? Is there anything else I can, you know, yep. do you have some questions? And if they don't answer, I'm not going to get offended. Because there you go. The bell curve tells me I've got it. That's right. Now, they may not respond because what? They're busy. They're just busy. They're just busy. That doesn't mean they're not interested. Mm -hmm. How many times have you follow up with a person, multiple times they didn't answer, then all of a sudden you get a call out of the blue one day and say, hey, I'm ready to go. I've been getting everything you send to me. Thank you for that. 